Hey listeners, welcome back to Podcasty Mastered. This is Wade and Chelsea as always, and uh, today we, we wanted first to wish you all a little bit of a late, but a happy new year all the same. It's been a while. We were just getting done with Christmas, I think, last time we had an episode. Uh, we hope you all cut that episode, but here we are with this one. Um, today we're going to be talking about a graphic novel that we had the chance to read and sort of kind of review. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and that graphic novel is called The Forgotten Blade. Now, Chelsea, you want to tell us a little bit about that graphic novel? Yeah, so it is from, it's published by TKO Studios, and one of the co-founders of it, Z Chun, actually wrote this graphic novel. And the art is by a guy named Tony Fejula. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I probably didn't. Sorry if we didn't. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so this uh, graphic novel, it's... Uh, made up of six issues and it's kind of you know high fantasy style it's deals with a lot of interesting elements but the story is basically let's see how to simplify it so it, it's pretty pretty straightforward you have like a it's it seems like it might be kind of post-apocalyptic in a way like i kind of got a little bit of those vibes but like it takes place on a planet where the world is ruled by a religion mm-hmm did they, they never gave us the name of that religion, did they? No, we just know who their, like, god is called. The All-Father. The All-Father, uh-huh. And he, this, the god created five rivers doing, that do different various things. Mm -hmm. um, but people were able to um, prosper, I suppose, because of these rivers. Mm -hmm. And then you have, of course, you know, you have the religion ruling over, but then the, you know, some people are oppressed and everything and there's some turmoil and some fighting back against it so there's this guy that comes along ruza and he basically he's only out for himself in the beginning he basically just wants to say that he's like the best warrior ever and just like yeah basically just a mercenary looking for mm -hmm. looking to prove his worth yeah and so at the very beginning like i think they're like in a war between like the church and like the common people and then he just comes up out of mm -hmm. nowhere and's like I'm going to kill you, warrior, and you're dead, and just... Right, because there's, there's a guy who's, like, leading those common people. Mm -hmm. um, he's, like, the prophet or something. Yeah. Uh, that's what they called him, and he comes up with this, like, like this cool, like, glowing sword thing. Um, and so the church basically just hire Ruza to be like, Ah, will you just, like, fight this guy for us? Um, and Ruza's like, yeah, because he's the... All like, knowing I want to fight. Yeah. And, yeah, like I just want to fight. So he does so and he wins against this prophet. Um, and then that's kind of the end of that. Yep. <laughs> like that's the end that's of their where fight. the story starts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it skips ahead like like fifteen years or something like that. Yeah. Where the mercenary's basically just like a big old drunk because mm -hmm. he can't find anybody to fight him. Yeah. Although people try, the people come after him to prove their own worth. Mm -hmm. um, they fail miserably. But he, yeah, yeah kills them without his sword and everything. And then that brings us to our, I guess, main protagonist. Mm -hmm. Yes, who is an interesting woman. A shamaness, I think. Is that what they... Yes. Shamaness. Yeah. They basically end up using that more as her name for a lot of the uh, story because they they're do. like, ew. And mystical her... things but her basically thing is she's basically a mother seeking revenge for like the church letting her ch children die because of her being right. a shamaness yo being accused because they see that as being like basically like a modern day witch like mm -hmm. you're working against the religion you are poisoning what's being taught and so they they go after her or they sick the church after her i suppose yeah. um and her children get caught up in it and so they they push the children into one of the rivers, the River of Souls, and their souls are lost in this river forever. Mm -hmm. Like it, you, you could you could think it's like well when people die they go into the River of Souls. No, not really. It yeah. seems like a very terrible place for your soul to be. Mm -hmm. um, like they're just they're trapped within this river for all eternity. Yeah, it's um, so Noah. The, the lady's name she 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 witnesses this happening with her kids um and then she gets she kind of gets like scarlet lettered 
Mm -hmm. That's and then stabbed and then pushed off a cliff where she comes back and she's like, I hate the church. I'm going to stop them. Mm -hmm. And so what better way for her to try to stop the church by being like, oh, let's find Ruza. You know, he wants to kill things that are bigger and better and stronger than him. So I'll get him to go along with my plan. Mm -hmm. And what what's her goal? What is her goal, Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> to, to kill god <laughs> to kill their god to kill the kill the all father, father yeah um it's a little uh it's a little golden compass even <laughs> <laughs> but no she um she's like you want to you want a warrior worth fighting well okay why not i'm gonna go find yeah. god mm -hmm. yeah let's, let's go kill god and bring down the church and he's just like sure okay. yeah pretty much <laughs> might as well yeah like, I can't get drunk here anymore, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty much, like, the initial setup of the whole story. And then, of course, you know, it kind of goes into their journey of fighting their way through. And I don't think we'll cover... I don't think we'll get into spoilers. I think we'll just kind of... Yeah, we yeah. don't need to go get so detailed. No. But, but the... um, About halfway through, like... I feel like halfway through is about when it really opens up. Mm -hmm. And, like, all the drama really starts... Um, and it's really like downhill from there. Like it's, it's like a one, one way trip after that point. Yeah. It, yeah. Everything just, yeah. Just starts spiraling really fast. And there's definitely a lot of, yeah, of course there's, you know, some twists here and there and little surprises and, but yeah. So that's kind of a little bit of a tease for that. So we won't give it away. So if our listeners want to check it out, then they can do that. And it's kind of, I think, I can just say, like, in general, some of the themes of that, like, you know, we kind of already talked about, like, the overall, like, the religion is, like, the, the people in power and stuff. So it deals a lot of with that, you know, those themes of religion and those of an abuse of power and information is a big part of that as well. Mm, yeah. Stocking up information away from the common people. Yes. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, the art in it is, like, it's very unique. Mm-hmm. Yes. It reminds me of something, and I had it earlier in my head, and now I can't, I should have wrote it down. Um, but it seems familiar in a way, but like the color, the color themes and stuff, they change a lot to kind of depending on like where they are. Mm. Um, and that's reflected like in the characters. Um, but it's just, it's, it's very quite good. The art is. Yeah. It's, yeah, I know. When I like looked at it, I'm like, this looks familiar at the same time totally unique and i think it's just like the color schemes themselves like these like each like panel is just so colorful in its own way like it's not like mm -hmm. bold per se but it just has a lot of color a lot of expression in each yeah mm -hmm. and it's really interesting to see like that much use of color of like not quite almost like rainbow-esque in like each one like each panel but you definitely like, like you said you get a lot of like similar colors depending on the area they're at and what's going on but like the detail though in the drawing like they don't use similar colors to like make life easy um it's not like that but like the detail within every single box of art is just crazy they're like each like, like you could hang like, it on your wall probably yeah like the shading and everything like this would have taken me way too long <laughs> There's a lot of uh, detail and intricacies put into, like, the world-building aspects. There's a lot of, like, intricate design work in the backgrounds on a lot of these panels mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Definitely cool to look at. Lots of interesting, like, like lore building and stuff. Like, the world design is so cool. I bet, like, it would translate really well to the screen. Mm -hmm. um, like, this, this one graphic novel, I feel, would make a pretty cool movie by itself. I would probably love it as an animated movie to really help stylize it. Ooh, yeah, yeah there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. I like that. Let's see that. <laughs> Let's get our people on that. Yes. <laughs> All our people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts on The Forgotten Blade? No, I don't think so. I think we covered it all. Just wanted to give our listeners yeah, a little tease. Without giving yeah. too much away. Yes. So, listeners, if that sounds interesting to you, well, let us know. Let us know what you think. Or if you've read it, let us know what you think, too. We don't want to give away too much. Mm -hmm. But I'd be interested in having a conversation about spoilery things. Yes. Well, besides besides this graphic novel, Chelsea, have you been reading anything lately? 
it's been a while since I've asked that question. I know. Yeah, we haven't really had like one of our kind of like book club episodes in a while since we started that one last fall. So I have read quite a few things since then, but one of the books that I did just finish re- reading probably within the last couple of weeks, this book is called Last Night at the Telegraph Club, and it's by Melinda Lowe. And this book, I think, came out in like 2021. So it's a historical fiction like romance, but it's an LGBTQ romance. And so it takes place in the 1950s. So it's a time of like a lot of turmoil in the United States. You have a lot of like the red scare going on and everything like that. And so this girl, she is in high school. She's Chinese American. So she's just, you know, kind of dealing with her life and her household growing up, just trying to figure out what she wants to do next in life. And then dealing with her sexuality and a romance starts with the girl at her school and everything. And oh my goodness. Yeah. But one spoiler I will give because. A lot of times when you have these, like, LGBTQ romance stories, they always end in tragedy. I feel like you never really see too many positive stories. You need a lot of drama. Yeah. A lot of tragedy. Yeah. (laughs) But the one spoiler I will give is that, like, it has, like, a bittersweet ending to it. So it's, like, worth a read in a sense because you're not just going to have, like, death and destruction at the end. But a little funny tidbit about this book. So um, this was a book that was gifted to uh, us and... It was from my wife's uncle, who, funnily enough, was the author's, uh, like, grade school teacher, like, years ago. Oh, that is so yes. cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so just a funny little connection there. And I've been following her progress for a while. And when she reads that book, he wanted to share it with everybody. So it was an huh. interesting read. Well, that's good to hear. That's so cool that, like, there's, like, a personal connection there, too. Yeah. That's neat. <laughs> Aw. So what about you? Have you read anything interesting lately? Well, a lot, a lot of the stuff that I read over break was mostly catching up on like all of my comics that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot, there was, there was a lot of series I had just kind of like put to the side while I was trying to get through like my, like more favorite ones. Um, But I have, I, I did them all over break. I caught up on every series that I have. Wow. It's a little refreshing. <laughs> no, that's... Th- I don't have to keep staring at a stack of books being like, oh no. Yes. <laughs> I'm like four issues behind in this. But not anymore. Not anymore. Um, and so some of the ones that that I read that I was like, that I'm just still in love with. Um, I've got I've got four here listed. Yeah. Um, I Currently, DC is doing, like, well, they just got done with it, I guess. A uh, another crisis on infinite earths mm. um, <laughs> event. Um, this one is called Dark Crisis, um, where essentially like the the Justice League is gone, like they've been murdered, um, and all of the like the legacy characters, so the sidekicks and the young ones and stuff like they all have to kind of step up and try mm. to protect the world when all of this craziness has happened and it it finished and. Um, and it it does a lot of good stuff for uh for Nightwing for Dick Grayson, um it he takes on some a lot of leadership and mm-hmm. fails and succeeds and it's it's a good story for him I think, um so I'm glad I picked that up we'll we'll see what the DC's done such weird things with their comics for a while I don't I don't know where this is gonna go but uh, eh, we'll we'll see we'll see, um a pretty basic one pretty basic um X Men read is uh x-men red Mm. which mostly takes place like like up on mars okay because if you didn't if you didn't know um a year or so ago the x-men the mutants they they colonized mars they terraformed and colonized mars um and so this this book takes place with the team of mutants led by storm um because she kind of like she kind of rules over Mars, like, sort of, sort of, kind of. She's actually, like, the spokesperson for the entire galaxy mm. and, like, intergalactic affairs. As she should um, be. So she's, <laughs> as she as she damn well should be. You're absolutely mm-hmm. right. Um, so there's a lot of drama going on in this book between Storm, who's trying to acclimate to, like, these other mutants, these, like, really crazy war-mongering <laughs> mutants. <laughs> um, at the same time... Abigail Brand is kind of she's kind to man, trying to manipulate like 
the entirety of all space politics mm. to put herself in 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 the ga- in the soul galaxy but herself in a place of like supreme power like how nick fury is for earth and he knows everything at all times and everything she wants to be like that for the entire galaxy for for the entire universe she wants to protect everybody but um she she does some really questionable things mm. <laughs> um yeah i won't get into too many things because a lot of those things are like huge story points um she is a badass though i love abigail brand she's a nasty person like <laughs> she's mean she's not a nice no. person yeah but she does the things she thinks she's doing you know things for the greater good but my lord she is just oh she's something special um but to exit away from that there's a new there's another x book that's just it's just like a five limited series run kind of Mm -hmm. thing um it's called x terminators (laughs) and this is this is a a little bit different of an x book um (laughs) think like it's like mean girls the x-men book sort of (laughs) kind of in a way i don't know I'm sure there's oh, no. a better reference to make on that. Um, but basically, Dazzler is has broken up with her boyfriend, who has, she's, like, caught cheating with or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't know. Um, so she grabs Jubilee and Boom Boom, and she's like, let's go to the bar and we're going to get drunk. We're going to have a girls' night out because I need to get over my ex. And they're like, dude, okay. Like, that sounds fun. Um, but while they're at, they go to the bar where her and like the bar that her and her ex boyfriend would go to all the time, and he's actually there and he drugs them all, Gosh. and basically throws them into an arena, um, a death arena, of course, mm-hmm. um, because he's actually the grandson of Dracula, which Desler doesn't know this, so they're they're playing death games for an audience of vampires, more or less. Um, but if, if you don't know anything about Jazzler and Jubilee and Boom Boom, um, their powers are quite explosive. (laughs) Perfect Um, description there. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And, but like the whole time, like Boom Boom is still drunk. Dazzler and Jubilee are like hung over. Um, it's, it's not an, it's not an appropriate book. (laughs) (laughs) I can't imagine. It's such a mess of a book. Yeah, it's such a mess. Well, when they get there. When they get there, um, Laura, uh, Wolverine, she's mm-hmm. been there for several days. Just She was kidnapped days ago. Oh. Um, so she's been slaughtering vampires and monsters and stuff for days. So she's just, like, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> she's all, like, beat up and covered in blood. And, and she's just exhausted. And then they come in, being their white girl selves. Life at the party, <laughs> trying to. <laughs> their drunk white girl <laughs> selves. <laughs> so... And that's like the start of the second issue there. So they go on an adventure together and oh boy, <laughs> there's a lot of inappropriate names called and all sorts of wonderful things. It's a fun book. I'm really glad I picked that up. Sounds like a ridiculous um, but mess. But I also, <laughs> it is a ridiculous mess. You should go read it. I bet you'd like it. Okay, it's, on yeah. my, it's on my thing. Okay, I'll give it a read. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, then, and then also, perhaps my favorite thing ever um, they released a new ongoing Scarlet Witch book, mm-hmm. um, which which puts Wanda in a new place. Um, she's kind of getting over her issues, and every and everybody else is kind of getting over those issues too. So she's in a better place to help people. Um, she opens up this kind of like a book trinket magical shop kind of thing in New York, um, where people can come in and buy little 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 things to help with little problems in their lives but within the shop there's this thing called the last door where um she has enchanted it so if anybody on earth is kind of at their end and they have nobody to rely on and just kind of they're just broken people kind of thing um this door appears to them uh and they come to see wanda and wanda saves them basically hmm from whatever darkness it is that they can't get they can't escape from it's just it's so good it everything is has been so good in this first issue and i hope it keeps keeps going keeps going mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Sounds like you have like a quite variety of stories you've been reading, all kinds of. <laughs> yeah, well, I I feel like I just kind of gotten lucky, I think, but I've mm-hmm. picked up quite a. I I have the the comic books that I get right now are a good variety of things, mm-hmm. um, and not on purpose. I think that just happened <laughs> on accident, but I'll take it. Yeah, I'll works take out. It. Yeah. The, the Spider-Man stuff isn't isn't as strong right now, so I'm glad the X-Men stuff is still still kicking all sorts of butt. Yes. Thank God. Thank goodness for the X-Men. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's basically what I've been reading lately. <laughs> lots and lots of comics. Sounds like a good time though. Yeah, there's It is. It is. There's so many to read. It's always good to find those that you enjoy. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Yep, that's one of my goals this year. I'm going to read more comics, so I'm sure I'll have more comics to talk about in the coming months. Good. I hope so. We need to have a good comic chat yes, sometime. Yes, definitely. That'll be a tease for our listeners. We'll talk more comics soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do just a whole, like, Krakoa episode, I think. Once yes. you get into get them, get into those comics and you can start getting some good stories in, we can have a nice, nice Krakoa conversation. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All yes. right. Well... Do you have anything else you'd like to add to this one? I don't think so. I think I just really wanted to highlight the one book I had read recently that was interesting. And, you know, listeners be ready for... We're going to have quite a few more book episodes or themed episodes about particular oh. series and the coming we have ones. We have some plans. And um, <laughs> you <laughs> might it. we're not going to tell you what it is right now. But um, <laughs> you, it might be, you might think it's a little cringy, but maybe you'll join us. Yes. We'll see. We'll we alluded see. to it in our first official book club episode, so you oh, may have right. some we guesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot about yes. that. <laughs> All right. Well, listeners, we hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. Um, be sure to follow us everywhere, everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're all over the place. YouTube now. If you have ideas for stuff that you'd like to see from us, contact us on social media. Send us an, an email to demasteredpodcast at gmail.com. Um, we'd love to chat with you all about all the things or just kind of cast a, catch us as we post on our social media. But let us know what you want to see and we'll do what we can. We hope that you all had a great, happy new year uh, and hope that hope things are going well. So uh, we will catch you in the next episode.